New Zealand's wine exports have doubled in value over a decade, with sales from October 2019 uh, to 2020 totaling a record-breaking $2 billion. One thing we have learnt through lockdown was that people's love for wine was most definitely very prominent. Clive Jones, Chair of New Zealand Wine Growers, joins us now here on Serious Country. Uh, Clive, uh, and certainly it's wine o'clock, and uh, and I mean you're working in the absolute best industry to, to be in, um, you know, in terms of when even in previous recessions, global downturns, people turn to the booze. Yeah, well, um, yeah, exactly. And it's interesting, we made that prediction of going from $1 billion to $2 billion, um, in the grips of the, you know, a couple of years beyond the last global financial crisis. So, you know, 2010, um, things were pretty tough back then. But uh, I guess in terms of setting ourselves a goal, um, it was a bit of a hag at that stage, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, but we thought, no, the demand's there. People love New Zealand wine we think we can get to two billion within 10 years and we've done it. Congratulations, because I mean, that's certainly not directly connected to COVID. It's just been an acceleration and the plans have been in place for the New Zealand wine industry for some time. What I absolutely love about the audacious, hairy goals is that you actually sit and work backwards (laughs) with precision to work out how to achieve them. What have been some of those fundamentals to actually reach this goal and put that framework in place? Well, we have seen steady growth over the over that ten years, you know. Uh, and and look, we we didn't we weren't too concerned if it happened this year. Um, and certainly, end of last year, beginning of this year, we didn't actually think it would happen in twenty twenty. I thought it might have been twenty one, twenty two. You know, we were confident, always confident we were going to get there. But we have seen that acceleration happen. But I mean, we've we've always had faith in the New Zealand wine that we produce. It has this unique character. Um, it's you know it's got a strong sustainability story and and it's a delicious drink at the end of the day. So we always felt that confidence in our product and um, you know we've seen continuous growth over the over the last ten years, but just a little acceleration in the last six months, which has got us across the uh, the line um, in the year twenty twenty. And I mean, the, the, the industry's absolute focus on quality over uh, specifically volume has rewarded the wine industry. Um, do you think? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So in our key export markets of the US, Australia and the UK, we are either the, the highest um, priced imported wine or the second highest. So, um, you know, and that's, that's an amazing position to be in. So, and to have, I guess... You know, we, we have increased in volume um, in, to get from one billion to two billion, but we've we've sort of maintained that value proposition as well too. So, you know, and that's that's been very port- important. To, you know, it's not only about volume; it is about value as well. Yeah, and I'm talking about markets uh, with COVID and the disruption of supply lines. Can you give us a bit of an understanding of what it has been like and how it is now? It's 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 actually one of the challenges at the moment is getting product to market. So there's um, there's infrastructure issues in, with shipping containers. Um, the flow of shipping containers around the world has been disrupted. So we're having to actually work a lot more in advance than perhaps we were expecting. So that's the whole flow of goods around around the world. So we you know we are seeing a few delays and things like that, but. Um, that's just something we're having to, to come to grips with, I guess. But, I mean, we, we have seen a, a bit of a change in the, the way the wine is sold. So the, the, the volume or the, the, the acceleration has been at retail. So those companies that have got routes to market into supermarkets and, and chains of wine shops, et cetera, have done very well. Um, but there are some companies that are more focused on um, restaurant sales and, you know, and that's actually been pretty tough because obviously with the restaurants that have been closed around the world, they don't sell a bit of wine. So there's it a little bit of a two-speed sort of situation happening, but, um, but overall the, the picture is very good.
Mm, I've got a winemaker um, quote in front of me that attributes the secret of New Zealand wine success to the fruit intensity, sense of place and relative consistency of style. Uh, With the rise of sort of protectionism and nationalism in our markets, that uniqueness of our appellations here in New Zealand, um, is the New Zealand industry only just going to build deeper and deeper on that? Absolutely, yeah. So... Um, look, perhaps if, you know, we have grown in, in, in scale over the last 10 years, if plantings have increased, um, I think, you know, in terms of setting goals for the next 10 years, the, the value proposition and, and, and building additional value into our wine is going to be a key factor. Um, we are going to run up against limits of availability of land or water or, or you know, various resources that is going to put a restriction on supply. So, you know, we want to make sure that we we keep that demand up and we keep that value up for sure. Uh, We're going to be speaking to Tim Jones from the summer fruit industry towards the end of the show, uh, Clive. I mean, grape harvest is typically near the end of the fruit harvesting season, so to speak. But where does your worries lie in regards to the the valuable migrant workers not being uh, able to come in? Or do you think it's too early to consider where things may be by then. Well, look, it's it's a real issue, and um, like any like the, the wider horticultural um, industry, we we've got concerns as well. Um, we we are concerned about the harvest, and um, we're actually concerned a little bit about helping the winery. So whether we've got enough people to come and help us with in, in the winery work, we have a peak of labour there. But in terms of the, the migrant workers and our peak labour demand, it's actually in winter um, when we have to prune. So in Marlborough, for example, there's over 50 million grapevines planted and they all have to be hand pruned. So that's a big job. So we're hoping that we can sort of complement the, you know, the peaks and troughs of the other horticultural industries and, and kind of share that labour around so that we all get a um, perhaps a fair crack at it. And, you know, we get the, the key is getting the labour where it's needed, when it's re- needed, and that's going to take some organisation. Mm. Hey, Clive, thank you so much for coming on Serious Country and congratulations on hitting that $2 billion mark uh, as an industry and that's doubling in the last decade. This is Sarah's Country.